Welcome in here, ladies and gentlemen, on a Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, depending where you're at. We are here at the Southern National Motorsports Park tonight with your L5 Motorsports Northeast Racers. And it's Muth back in the booth here on a Sunday night. Alongside me, it is the man from upstate New York. It is Al Smith. Al, it is a very short track here for week number three, but a lot of drivers, 39 exactly, have found their way here to the Southern National uh, Motorsports Park. Yeah, Southern National here in North Carolina, the high banks. It's uh, kind of shaped, you know, it's a, like the old Bristol was, Roger. So I'm expecting a lot of action here tonight. There are two to three grooves are racing, and it's going to be one hell of a show. Absolutely. These boys last week from the South Boston Speedway, Alan Young was your winner there, and they put on one whale of a show. So tonight, here from this, well, not quite as tight short track. I expect some of the uh, similar racing right now. Tony Quadros does have the top time here in our practice session. Practice just wrapping up here for these boys before we head into, which I believe is a five minute qualifier here tonight from the Southern National. Danny Ware was weak as week one winner so look for him to possibly have a very strong outing here again i believe this track is going to suit danny Ware a little bit better than what the south boston speedway did and let's see one of the first drivers out there is going to be a driver who had the chance last week to find himself into victory lane it's going to be the driver of the number four of jonathan lemay remember lemay went two laps down last week and just could never really battle back out of that hole till it was just a little bit too late still wound up coming away with a top i believe it was still a top five finish just was not the finish that he would have liked to have He'll jump to the top of the speed chart, Roger, with a 13.454 second. Terry, Tyler Leary in the 56 will jump in the second. Ryan came in, or Carmen in the 08 will jump in the third right now. A lot of drivers up getting up to speed right now. The 30 of Kent and Pitzinger. He's getting up to speed to put down his first lap here tonight. Yeah, and it looks like he's going to go to right around the uh, 12th position. And now Jonathan LeMay is back out there. These guys, five minutes, unlimited laps, I believe it is. So they're going to hot lap a lot here during this qualifying session. As you see LeMay do it once again, he's going to come through a little bit slower. And now he will go back down onto pit road. The Bandit 61 machine here, been driven by Matthew Gain, is currently sitting in the 10th position. Now he drops a position as Zach Nicholson goes through the traps and now he will bump him down so everything's gonna happen quick here alan young last week's winner is out here in his 24 machine currently does not have a time to lap in just yet the young young gun creation 24 of alan young is now on the clock here tonight so he will join into the round of qualifying to see where he will start in our heat races tonight that are coming up in just a little bit Top two, though, Al, tonight here in qualifying will lock themselves in. Right now, it is, ooh, Alan Young going to go up there. So it's Alan Young now in second, and Jonathan LeMay, P number one, currently with about a minute and 45 to go. Yeah, we had some, definitely some heavy hitters still left to go as uh, Andrew Davis uh, getting up to speed in the 77 of Kyle Bingham. He's getting up to speed as well to put down his first qualifying laps here tonight. We'll see where Kyle, as he gets the green flag now through turns one and two and down the back stretch. Yeah, looking at that 77, you can hear it. He is out of the throttle a lot in these corners. You got to pick up the throttle, you know, pretty much perfect to be able to lay down a hot lap. Bingham going to go to sitting sixth on the boards and look at that the 12 of tony quadros with just over a minute to go puts his illumina number 12 at the top of the speed charts the three of swanson right now he has his terminal trucking number three sitting sick let's see if he can move up on the timing and scoring he will not it is a little bit slower of a lap that time by back out on track though it's the vermont cabinetry elfod motorsports backed entry tonight the number 20 of david greenslit he is sitting 17th on the board now 18th because it looks like dagnot just went out there in that 42 and tegan will take over the 14th position in his number 23 jordan 
Toyota. Right now to 35 of Milton Duran coming off turn number four. He's going to take the green flag to set with just 20 seconds left here as he works off turn number two and down the back stretch with his number 35. He currently sits in the 21st position. He's going to come off turn number four. And at the line, does he improve? He does. He'll move up to the 15th spot. So, Roger, every position is just a, a starting spot further up in your heat race as we get ready to go with heat race number one for your L5 Motorsports heat race number one. Yeah, so it looks like Tony Quadros will lock himself in. Who was that second locked in machine there, uh, Al? It looked It was the number 28 of Danny Ware, and he comes into tonight's standings second place in the points, Roger. So a good way to start out here tonight as the grid for heat race number one is starting to line up. Yeah, let's see you through your first grid here tonight. This is your Elfod Motorsports starting lineup. Starting on the front row is scheduled to be the 31 of Brad Carpenter. Right alongside him, it would be the three of Matt Swanson. Cooper Branchard would start there. Or Bouchard, sorry, would start there in the second row. Next to him will be the 35 of Milton Duran. Starting on row number three, it'll be the 04 of Blake Clark and the 22 of Andrew Davis. Row number four, it'll be the 33 of Jarrett Curtis as the field starts to roll away. And starting next to him, it'll be Chris Lockwood in the 84 machine. Starting in the fifth row here in final row, it is the 25 of Clark Brooks and David Elliott in the 43 machine. That is your 10 car field here tonight presented by Elfod Motorsports. 12 laps the distance. And we're gonna lock in five cars. Your top five will move into the dance later on. Everybody else will have to go to that dreaded last chance qualifier, which we're, we could, like we saw last week, Roger, anything will and can happen in the last chance qualifier. That's uh, one race that you really don't want to be a part of, especially here at the Southern National, because we're going to get ready to go green flag racing for the first time here tonight. Yeah, it'll be 12 laps here. It'll be Swanson to the outside of Brad Carpenter here as the iRacing pace car is down on the way into that restart zone. And we are racing for the first time here tonight at Southern Nationals in your Northeast Racers, presented by the Elfond Motorsports. And it is a great start by that 31 Mustang Brad Carpenter machine. He takes the lead here. And it looks like when we get back around here, he will lead lap number one. And the battle is just outside that transfer position. I believe it's five here tonight. Right now, one of them going to go around. It's going to be the 22 of Andrew Davis and that's going to want him up into the outside wall for the driver of the 22 of Andrew Davis, I believe. Chris uh, Lockwood also down there. He is stuck onto that inside retaining wall. First caution flag of the night is going to fly here on lap number two of our first heat race tonight. We will go back and watch this on the turn three racing replay. This is how it all unfolded. You see the 22 up the track out of turn four. Comes down and oh, the 33 of Curtis was there. They made the contact of the 84. Gets a little more contact and turn down into that inside wall. Chris Lockwood had to take the tow back to pit road as we are halted here under our heat race number one. Yeah, tough break for Andrew Davis. Very easy to do here at the Southern National Speedway. Uh, going into the corner side by side, that inside car, you have to hit it perfect. You got to hook. Everybody's looking to hook the yellow line, which uh, really isn't that noticeable right now with the amount of rubber that is laid down here tonight so far. And it's just going to get a little bit more as we go, Roger. But the fast way around early on is going to be right around that bottom line. you got to hook it just right. If you don't, you can wash up and make contact with the car to your outside if you're side by side. But uh, take a watch this outside on this restart. I think these guys can be able to hang out there for about three, four laps before the inside will prevail again. Yeah, we will see here in just a moment as it looks like we're going to line them back up here. I believe double file. The iRacing pace car lights are off. So here for your front row, it will still be the same. The 31 of Carpenter to the inside and the three of Swanson to the outside. It'll be six laps to go when we take the green flag. 
pace car. Going to be taking a left-hand turn off of the race's surface. That'll leave it into Brad Carpenter, and he'll jump on the, the gas pedal. Swanson with a much better start this time down to turn number one. Swanson with a momentum on the outside. They'll come off the corner side by side to 35 and Duran. He's working around the outside of Bouchard as they work through turns three and four. Carpenter going to hold on to it as they have seven lap seven with it's in the books as the 84 of Lockwood comes out of the pitch. Bill's going to sneak by him down the back stretch all single file as they come off of turn four. Yeah, right now it has been all Brad Carpenter as he comes by this time. By to be four laps remaining here in the heat race number one tonight. Swanson back there running second to Rand is third. Bouchard is running there in the fourth position. And I believe it's the last place transfer car right now is the driver of the 04 of Blake Clark. He has not got any pressure as we look back here. Off the deck lid of the 04 of Clark, you see that is, well, Clark running fifth. Brooks is running in that sixth oh, position. Oh, trouble in turn numbers four. The 84 of Lockwood has gone around. Uh, it looks like we're going to stay green flag, though, as Carpenter's going to come off. Now the caution comes out, Roger. Yeah, looks caution like coming out there as it looked like Lockwood was trying to back his car up the track, and the caution going to fly very quick there. That's going to send us into a little bit of overtime here in heat race number one. Brad Carpenter was hoping to come off that final corner there to see the white flag, and then he could possibly lock himself in here. This is the first time that uh, we've actually seen the driver of the 31 on track here with the Northeast Racers and he is trying to lock himself into the big dance here right away. Yeah, Brad Carpenter, a very fast competitor in the super late models. I've watched and uh, been able to race with him multiple times myself and uh, definitely is no stranger to the Southern National Speedway, loves this racetrack, always a strong competitor here and is uh, showing it here tonight with Swanson there right off his deck lid Really three laps to go. Swanson almost had that move on the outside last time, Roger. It's almost like I knew what I was talking about. Well, I wouldn't go that far. The night is still early. Al, how many laps do we have to go here in heat race number one? Uh, three to go. Incorrect. It's going to be two to go when we take the three. Ah, uh, see? That's what I'm here for, just to make sure you got your P's and Q's in order here. <laughs> but it has definitely been Carpenter here so far in this heat race. Swanson is sitting still there in that second position. Milton Duran is sitting third. Cooper Bouchard, er, yes, Cooper is sitting there in that seven machine in fourth. Blake Clark is sitting in the fifth position and Clark Brooks is one position. Now Andrew Davis is back out on track in his number 22. Uh, Pontiac, he is sitting in the seventh position. David Elliott is also out there running eighth and it looks like Jarrett Curtis is off the track right now running ninth. Uh, Lockwood is back out there, but he is a couple laps down, so it's just a couple practice laps there for the driver of the 84 here. And we will double them back up. Al Green White Checker attempt coming. Green White Checker for the first time tonight, presented by the L5 Motorsports Group. Brad Carpenter and Matt Swanson going to lead the field off a of turn number four. The pace car will get to the safe haven of Pitt Road as we're going to go green flag racing. Two laps to go. When they cross the stripe, green flag is out. Swanson tried to snook him a little bit. Gonna hold on to his right rear, but he'll fall in line here. He's coming in the corner. Oh no, there goes the seven of Bouchard. He's gonna get shuffled out of the year transfer spot. Here comes the 22 of Davis. Yeah, where did Andrew Davis come from? He's gonna look to the inside here on Brooks. They're gonna get the white flag one more time around here in heat race number one. A little contact there from Clark Brooks to the back bumper of Davis, but it's gonna be all Brad Carpenter coming across the line first. So Carpenter wins heat race number one, then it's Swanson, Duran, Clark, and Davis will transfer in to your main event coming up a little bit later on. Heat race, number two, get ready to come up onto the speedway. Now, on you walk us through your LFOD starting lineup here for heat race number two. Just making sure I had the right notes here. It looks like there'll be the 09 of Jeremy Davis, last week's runner up at the South Boston Speedway. He'll start on the pole on his outside, the 77 of Kyle Bingham. Starting on the inside of row number two will be the 55 of Kyle Willis. To his outside, the 08 of Ryan Carmen. Starting on the inside of row number three will be the 60 of Sean Bordeaux. And for the first time this season, the 37, the eighth time 
champion of the American Canadian Tour, Brian Hoare, in car number 37. Starting seventh will be Lucas Henley. To his outside will be Horse Dog Motorsports, the speedball bearing entry of the number 32 of Eric Steele. Slated to start ninth will be the 14 of Jeffrey Battle and the 98 of Stephen Dickey Jr. Rounding out the 10 car starting field, only eight taken to the grid right now as the other two are looking to get started here. So eight drivers are going to make the call for heat race number two as the grid starts to pull away here. A lot of strong competitors. This is a stacked heat race number two. A lot of laps turned between the 32 and I believe that 37 machine. We'll see if they will work their way through the front of this. But man, the guy starting on the pole is going to be a hard one to beat yet just alone by himself. That is the 09 of Jeremy Davis. And Kyle Bubbles Bingham running second there. So that front row is just stacked in its own. Yeah, Jeremy Davis is your current points leader coming into tonight's action for the Elfod Motorsports Northeast Racer Super Late Model Series. As this is race number three on the schedule, Jeremy Davis, your points leader. Kyle Bingham is going to start to his outside for heat race number two. It'll be Willis and Carmen as we're going to go green flag off turn number four. Green is out. We're on the loud pedal for the first time in heat race number two. Yeah, heat race action started here for that or for this race here. The second position is secured right now by Kyle Bingham. But Willis in that third trouble, position, trouble. I was going to say somebody went around there coming into uh, turn four. I believe it might have been. Was that the uh, 60 machine? Sean might have been involved in that. I didn't quite catch it out of the corner of my eye, but we will have a second here to throw it back and see exactly what happened there. The 08 of Carbon is involved in his Monster Energy Kit Kat machine. There you see the 08 up the track. Oh, the 60 going to wash up just a little bit there. It looks like Al, he may have just drove it in a little hard. Carbon up the track and the caution flag going to come out. Yeah, it looks like Bordeaux just missed the entry on, in to the corner, and the car just washed up the speedway and just tagged. Uh, maybe he was trying to take a break out of that Kit Kat bar in the 08 of Carmen there, Roger. Well, you never know with a lot of these drivers. It is dinner time here for a lot of folks on the East Coast, so we do welcome everybody in tonight here on the Turn 3 Racing Network. If you're out there eating, well, I hope you're eating something well. We also hope that everybody is healthy and, and safe. Uh, all around the world. We know these drivers right now here at the Virtual Southern National Motorsports Park. Uh, they may be safe for the moment, sort of like, well, Davis, Bingham, Willis, uh, Hinckley, and Hoare right now. They are the top five drivers, and they are safe until we go back to green flag racing. I was going to say, they're safe until the green flag drops. Then if it's anybody's ball game, as Jeremy Davis is showing the way. Just want to take a touch on the points right now, Roger. Jeremy Davis has a two-point lead over the 28 of Danny Ware and just a five-point lead over Jonathan LeMay, who we'll see in competition in the next heat race, I believe. So our first of our top of our point contenders up on the speedway, the 09 of Jeremy Davis, and it's a tight points battle after just uh, the first three two races. Yeah, a couple of these guys are going to receive sponsorship if they can hold on to those top spots. But we still have a lot of racing to go before we would even get to that. We still got to get through Southern National and I believe five flags in New Hampshire as the green flag is back out here in heat race number two. Davis going to get another really good start. Willis down to the inside this time on Bingham. Will he be able to make the move for that second spot? Bingham going to fight back. He will take back over his second position out of turn four to lead the first lap back to green. It will be Jeremy Davis and the battle is for the transfer spot. Here comes the Kit Kat Monster Energy Dodge Hellcat machine of Ryan Carmen. He now takes back over that fifth spot from Hinkley. They run single file around the speedway. Davis enjoying about a three car length advantage. Right now, Willis in your number three spot. Brian Horn in fourth. But the final stall start to shape up for your fifth spot as Hinkley got to the back bumper of Carmen. Carmen washes up the racetrack a little bit off turn number four, but he'll hold on to position. Side by side, three turns one and two, and down the back stretch to you, Roger. Yeah, and it looks like Carmen's gonna overshoot turn number two as you see the flames come out the bottom of his Kit Kat machine. 
now. Hinkley going to take over the fifth position, and that time by it was two laps to go at the flag stand. So next time by, we will see the white flag. Right now, it is all Jeremy Davis, but Kyle Bingham is right there in the Northeast Racer Chevrolet. One to go here tonight in heat race number two, presented by Elfod Motorsports. Out of turn number two, they come. It is Jeremy Davis. It is Kyle Bingham. It is Kyle Willis. Then it's Brian Hoare and Lucas Pinkley. That's how they will come across the line here in heat race number two. Everybody else to the last chance qualifier coming up just a little bit later on. Yeah, that'll be Carmen, Bardot, and Steele going to the last chance qualifiers heat race. Number three is coming up onto the speedway presented by the L5 Motorsports Group. And Roger, I think you'll have to line up for this one as we get ready to go with heat race number three. Yeah, I am past your heat race number three. Elfod Motorsports starting lineup here, and it's going to be the four of Jonathan LeMay starting on the front row on the pole position. Starting right alongside him, it'll be the number 42 of Deegan Dagnott. Starting on row number two in the third position, the car owner himself, it'll be the 91 of Justin Bankorski. Starting next to him in the fourth position, it'll be... Uh, Caden Barry in the 85 machine. Starting on the third row, driving the 97 here tonight, it'll be Jarrett Howard. Randy Cole Jr. in the 41 is slotted to start in your sixth position tonight. Row number four, it'll be Kevin Pitzinger in the number 30 machine. And then it is Randell Phillips starting there in the eighth position of the ninth driver into this heat race number three tonight. It'll be Jeff Gollop in the 44 machine. That's your nine car field. Here tonight, presented by the Elfod Motorsports. LeMay just watched his championship rival take the heat race win in heat race number two. He's looking to do the same thing as they work around the speedway here. Roger looks like the 97 of Jarrett Howard not making the call for heat race number three. Well, he'll have another chance. I hear it is a little bit of uh, technical difficulties with his sim rig here on iRacing.com. So he will have one more chance in the last chance qualifier that will be coming up just a little bit later on. So it'll be eight cars to make this call here. And I believe one more heat race coming up after this. That's correct. We got four heat races here tonight. Going to lock in 20 cars plus our front row from time trials. So we'll have 22 cars locked in tonight's main event before we go to the last chance qualifier. As the green flag drops, we're on the gas pedal side by side down to turn number one. As they come down to the turn one, it's the two strong cars here. It's the four of LeMay and the 42 of Diagnot, but down out of the back straightaway into three. It looks like Jonathan LeMay is going to get the job done. He will take the lead here on lap number one and lead lap number one here tonight. 11 more to go here in your heat race number three, and everybody just like that has already single filed out. you got to go all the way back here to Jeff Gollop. In the 44, oh, a little sideways there. He slid in corner number four as he went to put the power back down to the 44. Contact between Randell Phillips and the 44. They are sideways. All drivers trying to catch the cars. 44 of Gallup still galloping on that machine, and he is having difficulties now. May have a fender onto the tire, but we stay green flag racing. Nine laps to go here in heat race number three. And a battle for your sixth spot range is on. It'll be Phillips holding off Randy Cole Jr. in at number 41. As your top five kind of squirted away from them, but it's a uh, top four single files that work through the corner. Jonathan LeMay showing the way over Dagnall, Rick Bankowski, and Barry. Yeah, Barry runs into that uh, fourth position, but Pitzinger right now in his Wounded Warrior Project number 30. He is holding the transfer spot, and he's got about a half second gap over Randell Phillips. Let's check the timing and scoring. It actually, Phillips is the quicker of the two. He is going to be able to get there before the end of this one. It'll be five laps to go here for Pitzinger to hold off the strong charging 07 of Phillips. Uh, I don't know how he is coming, and he is coming in a hurry. Last time by, it was one-tenth of a second faster at the timing and scoring stripe. Yeah, he definitely charged in the corner a lot harder getting into the corner, about equal off of the corner. So the 07 of uh, Phillips, he is there all over the back front for a pit singer. So it's going to be, one thing is getting there, Roger. The next thing is trying to get by him. Yeah, that is always the challenge when we come to short track racing. Nothing has changed out front. It is still Jonathan LeMay. It is still Tegan Dagnott. 
And then it is Justin Benkowski sideways for Randell in the 07. That's going to take him possibly out of contention here because this time by, it'll be two laps to go. Now Pitzinger has about, well, a three second. Oh, caution flag on the speedway. Randell Phillips is going to go around. Yeah, it looked like something had broke on the 07 of Phillips as he got loose off of turn number four. And he has come to a stop and now taking a tow into the pit road. That's going to tighten up the field, Roger. That's on that pit singer will not. Didn't want to see as he was comfortably in that transfer spot. Now he's got the crowd all over him. Yeah, as we throw it back here and watch, you see it. The 07 touched the apron down there. And then what happened when he went down into turn three? It looks like he went to go get back on the car. And all out of turn four, it just absolutely broke traction. Then with those heat, heated up tires. And he took it right into a spin and then towed that car back to pit road here. Jonathan LeMay, though. Still out front, and now he will have to battle with, with uh, Dagnot and Benkowski for the win. Eddie will, and there was a little bit of bumper tag during that run. I don't know if we, if, if you guys saw it or not, but it was between the 85 of Barry and the 91 of Benkowski. They played a little bumper tag in three and four. Benkowski got out of shape, but at Barry, he left the 91 reel it back in so he stayed clean and green and they didn't really hurt their progress that much but now they'll start side by side here in this restart well Caden Barry has some new colors on the side of that 85 here tonight it's a very sharp looking car I think it might be uh, trying to represent a little bit of the uh, maybe a tiger scheme I'm not quite sure maybe everybody's got a tiger king on the brain here as of late Come on now, you're telling me you haven't seen Tiger King yet? I have. I was just trying to figure out how, how I want to come back from that one because uh, slippery slope. I thought I, I thought I was crazy and lived lived crazily until I saw that. Well, I think a lot of these Northeast racers here live a little crazy, you know, going out to the short tracks that they uh, visit, which you know is uh, Claremont, Hudson, uh, Lee Speedway. A lot of these competitors that you're seeing tonight run out there at all those track, and I believe. Uh, Monodoc, Monodoc, also they race there. And I think they're crazy, the kind of competition that they have and the beating and banging they put on, but it's always one whale of a show like it's gonna be here as the green flag is pending. The green flag is back out here tonight and we are racing to see who's gonna be locked in here. And I think that 30 machine back there, Pitzinger spun the tires and now he finds himself, I believe, on the verge of maybe not making it in to the big dance here tonight. Hey, you definitely got to spun the tires as the white flag will fly. Final trip down the back stretch side by side for your number two position as it is Benkowski working underneath the 42 of Dagnall. He'll come off the corner, checkered flag is up, and it'll be Jonathan LeMay picking up heat race. Number three, Benkowski, Dagnall, Barry, and Pitzinger all making their way into the night's main event. Heat race, number four, get ready to grid up here, Roger, and it'll be the 24 of Alan Young. Slated to go on the pole of the Elfod Motorsports heat race number four. David Greenslet in the number 20 will start to his outside. Inside row number two will be the number 56 of Tyler Leary to his outside the 34 of Zach Nicholson. Matthew Gain in car number 61 will start fifth to outside of him the 36 of Joel Hodgson as he'll start in the number 36 in the sixth spot. Kyle Buck in the 05 will start seventh. Derek Stanhope in 23 will start eighth. And shotgun on the field, car number 66, Mike Young, as they get ready to go for 12 laps, our final heat race of the evening. Final heat race here tonight for your Northeast race was presented by the El Fod Motorsports Group. And then we're going to head to, I believe, which will be our last chance qualifier coming up right next to Al, I believe. We're... Yeah, we'll go right into our last chance qualifier. And then we'll have a five-minute warm-up session before we head to the big show here tonight. Things happen fast at this track, doesn't it? I'm trying to keep up over here, and it's I'm running out of fingers and toes to keep track of where I'm at. Take your socks off. As we're going to go green flag, green flag is dropped, and we're underway with heat race number four. Drag race down to the turn number one. Green's left with a nose out in front of the 24 of Young. Young with a nice drive up off the corner, but Green's left's going to move the outside line to your uh, lead as he comes off turn number four. Alan Young in that 24 now takes a big back to the inside. Greenslet's going to give him 
the room down low because we got trouble on the back. Is Hodgson spot around in that number 36 car? Yeah, the 36 VT gonna go around here and it looks like there is some right front damage as he'll add to it as he tries to get that car wound back up. He goes up and slaps the outside retaining wall on the back straightaway here. So that's gonna bring us to the halt here. Let's throw it back on our turn three racing replay and see what happened to Joel as he was running in the sixth position. No contact there between Kyle Buck and then I believe was that the 23 of Stanhope, who was just kind of an innocent bystander there as Buck and Hodgdon get together? Yeah, it looks like they tried to go into uh, turn number one, three wide there, Roger. And, uh, well, that hole quickly closed up on the 0-5 of Kyle Buck, but he looks like he's been assessed the EOL penalty for bringing, causing the contact there as they were three wide. Uh, not an easy spot here at the Southern National Speedway to be uh, is in the middle of a three-wide situation. You're kind of, uh, one way or another, you're, it's probably not going to end up that well for you. Yeah, I mean, the straightaways are definitely wide enough to take that three-wide charge, but once you all funnel down into the corner, that's when things get messy, and that's what you just saw happen there. Right now, the street stock driver of David Greenslit has his... Vermont cabinetry number 20. Scheduled to start here on the front row as the lights on the iRacing pace car will go out. That will leave us with six laps here in heat race number four to decide who will make the show and who will be going to the last chance qualifier tonight. We are not sending any driver home directly out of the heat races. They will all have a chance to get themselves in as the iRacing pace car are about to duck in. I racing green pace car flag. is in there. Yeah, it's a little bit of a delayed green there for us on the timing and scoring, but green slit's going to take the charge down into one. He now takes over the command of this race. This time by, it'll be five laps to go. As it'll be green slit showing the way over young, but side by side battle back there for your fifth spot. The number 56 of Leary working the outside, trying to hold off the 61 of Matthew Gain. And here comes the 66, Mike Young. He's the one far on the outside looking at on the outside looking in is now we got a side-by-side -side battle once again for your race lead off turn two yeah, Green Slick going to slide that Vermont Cabinetry 20 car a little bit out of turn number two as he's just trying to roll the high side. Now, can he cross back over here on Young? He will not be able to. It'll be three laps to go. It is now Young, Green Slick, and Nicholson, your top three, and everybody single filed out. Gain is sitting back there in the four spot. Uh, Larry, or Lorette, da da da. Napa know how. In the 56, Tyler is sitting there in your final transfer spot. Tongue tie out. That happens. Hodgson's up to your number six spot in that 36 after hard right front contact. He's looking to chase down the 56 O'Leary. Because it's all Alan Young now. Green's left right back to the back bumper. He's gone to school on the back side of that 24 of Young. Young Guns creation number 24 showing the way. As they come off the corner, a checkered flag will be out. It'll be Alan Young showing the way. David Greenslet, Zach Nicholson, Matthew Gain, and Tyler O'Leary are going to make up the five cars going into the main event as we get ready to go with our LCQ here, Roger. Uh, take a moment here to figure out how many cars we're going to transfer. Yeah, as you take a moment for that, let's take you through your LFOD starting lineup here for what is considered a B main or a last chance qualifier here tonight. Starting on the front row, it'll be the 25 of Clark Brooks. He will be the first car to take the green flag. Next to him, it'll be the 08 Kit Kat machine of Ryan Carmen. Starting behind them on row number two, it'll be Randy Cole Jr. in the 41 machine. To his outside, it'll be Joel Hodgdon in the 36 machine. Row number three, it'll be the 43 of David Elliott. Looks like scheduled to roll off there in the sixth position. He did just take to the grade. It'll be the number 60 of Sean Brudrow. Starting on row number four, it'll be the 44 of Jeff Gollop and Kyle Buck in the 05 after having to access that EOL penalty. He starts on row number four. Row number five, it'll be the seven of Bouchard. And next to him, the track champion Eric Steele in the 32. Starting on row number six, it'll be Randell Phillips in the 07 and Mike Young in the 66. And I believe the last one to take to the grid here in our last chance qualifier will be Chris 
Lockwood. So only 13 cars out of the 17 scheduled here in the last chance qualifier will take to the grid. And now we will see who we can lock in. Al, what's the official number that we are taking out of the last chance qualifier here tonight? Do you have her? I believe it's going to be eight. The top eight cars will transfer. And now I'm being told three. So we're going to take three cars out of the tra out of this one. So your top three will make it into tonight's main event, making up a 25 car field for two Hundred or 150 laps here tonight, Roger. The only 150 here tonight from the Southern National Motorsports Park, and they are going to go quick, just like we are getting ready to take to the green flag here at Southern National for their last chance qualifier. Green flag is in the air as there's a little bit of timing and scoring glitch there. I believe we have one of them blinking out as that is... Oh, in trouble. The 83 going to go around. Along with the 43 and the 7... So a couple of these drivers going to go around here in turn number what, in turn number two on lap number one. That brings us to the caution flag here early on. So let's rewind her back and check it out here at the Southern National in your last chance qualifier. It looks like Elliott, who was scheduled there to start in the third row. What happens to the 43 of Elliott? Oh, he gets bumper tagged there by Bouchard. And around goes the 43 Thrustmaster entry. Uh, Bouchard also going to get some heavy damage to the nose of his number seven machine. So now the way you want to start your LCQ out is they've already making the 43 of Elliott on pit road right now. Roger trying to get that car fixed up as he was only in the pit box for 2.7 seconds. So quick stop. So maybe not as much damage on that 43 as he had thought, but you might as well come down pit road and get it cleaned up and get ready to go here 25 laps is our distance our scheduled distance but who knows we could go into that overtime like we have seen three out of the four heat races before this go as your top three will only transfer into tonight's main event yeah that's going to be a hard one to get to is only taking three out of your last chance qualifier here at southern national so right now it's brooks carmen and cole that are into those spots. A lot of good drivers going to go home here tonight. It looks like I'm officially seeing four drivers. Five drivers did not take to our grid. It looks like Dickey, Curtis, Howard, Battle, and Gallup did not take to our grid actually here tonight. So it only started 12 into our last chance qualifier. As next time by, we should uh, be dropping the green flag as Brooks is having a little bit of our uh, connection issue here to the iRacing server. Yeah, a little bit of electrical issues on the 25. Hopefully they'll get that cleared up as it's the 08 of Ryan Carmen to his outside. And then the 41 of Randy Cole sitting in your transfer spot. He's got the 36 of Joel Hodgson on his outside. And it's 60 of Bordeaux rounding out your top five as the green flag is going to drop here. Green flag is back out. We're back underway. And a nice start by Brooks, who is still continuing to have electrical issues. Yeah, everybody trying to scatter and find a way around right now. Here comes the 41 of Randy Cole the inside of the 08 machine. That's the battle for the second and third position they are in. And I believe Caution Flag going to come out here as the 66 snap on Mike Young machine is turned around on front of the field. He'll try and get that car turned around here as he will lose a lap. So a rough start here for a couple of these drivers. Let's check out what the replay says. For the driver of the 66, where was he battling on track? He was battling in that, oh, he just kind of lost her coming straight out of turn two and tried to get her turned around and lost her again, I believe. So a rough one there for Mike Young. He'll tag the rear of the field, but he will be shown now a lap down. And it's a long way back from there. Yeah, and Roger, it's very hard right now. The track has got a lot of rubber, and the rubber buildup on the inside of this racetrack gets on your tires once they're hot. It makes it very hard to gain traction, which is probably what happened to Mike Young. But it looks like Young is going to get the lucky dog as he's going to get back on the lead lap. So he'll still have a chance in his snap on number 66 car here tonight, but it'll be a lot to restart in your 12th position. That kind of saved a couple drivers that made contact through three and four as yellow was flying. That was between the 84 of Lockwood and the 43 of Elliott. 
So the field under green under pace right now, lap 12. We're going to be halfway through this 25 lap last chance qualifier as they cross the line. Yeah, just taking a peek at the timing and scoring here, Al. It looks like the seven of Bouchard was scored as our leader, but he is down pit road here. I believe that we may have another caution lap here to get the field sorted back out as there it is. The lights on that iRacing pace car do come back out as it should be. Clark out front with Carmen in second, Cole in third. I believe that's how the timing and scoring should read. So it looks like Cooper will be assessed that EOL penalty and he will come back out onto the track and regain at the tail of this field. Yeah, it looked like you just saw... Uh... They're going to wave off the restart once again. Give let Cooper Bouchard catch up to the back of the field. Looked like a little bit of a scoring glitch here in the control tower. Looking over at the man in charge of flight control here tonight, Rodney. And it looks like we got it all straight out now. So the lights will go back out. We should be going back green flag racing this time by off of turn number four. So it looks like that will leave us with 11 laps when we go back to green flag racing. Clark Brooks will be the control car on this restart. Let's see what kind of restart all these guys are going to get. We've seen some staggered up restarts here tonight at Southern National already. And the green flag is back in the air just like that. And it looks like Brooks is going to get a good start. Everybody is going to have to give chase to him now. And here comes the 08 of Carmen to the outside. Will he be able to stick the Kit Kat machine there on his quarter panel and get around him? He slips a little out of turn four back to the uh, starting lineup or starting line, and it will be Brooke. Brooke yeah, back Phillip, out front. Phillips on the outside now. He's got Carmen in the 08, impeding his progress. Phillips was very fast getting up through. He's in your four spot, side by side with the 41 of Cole Jr. That's the battle for your transfer spot. Three wide off of turn number two. It'll be Phillips rolling the outside very well. Going to be going for your race lead this time off turn number four and give it to him. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Randall Phillips using the outside of the speedway as we got cars sideways off the corner. Everybody keeping it clean and green. Now the 0 fives is going for a hard hit into the inside wall down in turn number three. Yeah, a little bit of contact there going into turn number three. Going to wad a couple of them up here. Kyle Buck is involved in that one. We'll throw it back real quick as there was some crazy, insane three-wide racing here when we got under 10 laps to go here tonight in your last chance qualifier. There you see the contact from Kyle Buck to the out or to the rear bumper there of that 36. And then the 32 of Steele kind of just in the wrong place at the wrong time and the hooks the 05 on the back straightaway. And that brings us under this caution flag. It looks like Mike Young, Eric Steele, and David Elliott all involved in this one. Okay, it's one of those chain reaction type things that happen on this speedway. For a little short track, you're carrying a lot of speed. Things happen very quick here at the Southern National Speedway. And uh, Roger, there's a tough break there as uh, the zero five of Kyle Buck down on pit road with some heavy front end damage after a head-on collision with the inside Armco barrier down in turn number three. Right now, it looks like the three drivers on our timing and scoring will throw that back up on screen for you. Find where your favorite driver out of the 12 drivers are here for your last chance qualifier. Randall Phillips right now is in. Clark Brooks is in. And Randy Cole in car 41. He is in for the time being. Ryan Carbon, he was up there in that second position for a long time. And all of a sudden, it looked like the handling of that kick. Kit Kat Monster 08 machine just kind of went away there. He got put three wide, and he just kind of pulled over and let everybody go on by him. He'll have another shot here at this one yet tonight to lock himself in as everybody groups back up. At the line, three laps to go as the lights go out. Randall Phillips going to show you as your race leader. He will use the outside, Roger. Now he's got to start on the inside. Inside the 25 of bricks, Randy Cole is in your transfer spot, but he's got a bunch of hounds all over the back bumper trying to make their way into tonight's main event as the green flag is getting ready to fly. 
Yeah, put two laps back on the board here. Green flag gonna come out, and it is actually a really good start that time by the 07 of Randell Phillips. He will lead us out of turn number two, and he's gonna smoke the wall. A couple others gonna hit the wall. Looks like that was Brooks. He's gonna hit the wall. Now they're all still making contact. Three wide, one of them gonna go around, but I believe we took the white flag. We will see who's gonna be able to come back around here right now. We can tell you Randell Phillips will lock himself in. Boot, or, uh, Sean in that 60, he will lock himself in. And then it's gonna be the battle between a couple damaged cars. Last dist effort there by the 25, he's gonna move. Lockwood out of the spot, and then they came across the line. I'm not sure how on that timing and score, but it's gonna show Clark Brooks as the final man in. But he had to use the chrome horn to get himself into the main event tonight. That, that was wild, and I know that Race Control is going to be taking a look at that one to see if they'll let that one slide as uh, we were told that it was going to be a short lease. As now we're into our warm-up period, so we'll let, we'll let them worry about that, Roger, as, uh, as we get ready to go to the warm-up period here for tonight's main event. Yeah, we are fi figure out who's going to start where here in just a little bit. But before we head to our little bit of a warm-up session here, we got to thank everybody from the Northeast Racers here tonight. All the drivers you see out on track are from a couple of these speedways. Claremont Motorsports Park, the Hudson Speedway, the Family Fun Track, Lee Speedway USA up there in New Hampshire, and Monadoc Speedway. All those speedways are part of the New Hampshire Short Track Racing Association where you can take your street stock or your super late model week in and week out and race on all four of those tracks and collect yourself points. So a lot of the drivers you see here tonight that have entered into the Southern National Motorsports Park are from one of four or they work for the crew. Or, well, they just know somebody to Al that we don't know. But while they get warmed up here, we're going to step away and we'll be right back here with your feature event here tonight for your Northeast Racers.
welcome back here to Southern National. We have caught up officially here before we head into our A main. Your pole setter here tonight for the A main. We've caught up with Tony Quadros. Tony, it's been a long time since you've been out there on track. How do you think the track has changed since qualifying tonight? You know, I think it got a little bit better, uh, a little bit tighter. It was, it was pretty loose off, uh, so it feels a little bit better for sure. Now you're going to start this number 12 on the front row here tonight. What are the chances with a very strong field like Danny Ware and LeMay and Swanson that are all going to start behind you? Will you be able to keep this 12 car up here tonight in the front? Yeah, I think it's going to be tough because you get a balance save in the tires, but also staying up front, so it can be pretty difficult. But uh, I think I can. Uh, all these guys race in real life, I don't, um, but uh, I get some good iRacing experience, so it should be good. Well, good luck to you, Tony, and the whole crew over there as it is time to take to our starting lineup here tonight, presented by the Elfod Motorsports Group. Starting on your front row of your 29-car field, you just heard from the man of Tony Quadros, he will start on the front row. Right next to him, it'll be the driver of the 28 of Danny Ware. Behind them, Brad Carpenter making his first main event start here in the 31. Next to him will be the 09 of Jeremy Davis. Row 3, it'll be Jonathan LeMay and Alan Young in the 24. Row number 4, it'll be the 3 of Matt Swanson and the 77 of Kyle Bingham. Row number 5, it'll be the 91 of Jonathan Benkowski and the Alphard Motorsport Vermont Cabinetry number 20 of David Greenslip. Starting on the inside of row number six will be the 35 of Milton Duran to his outside the number 55 of Willis. Starting on the 13th starting spot will be Tegan Dagnall, car number 42 to his outside the 34 of Zach Nicholson. Starting on the inside of row number eight will be the 04 of Blake Clark to his outside the 37 of Brian Hoare. Starting 17th on the grid will be the 85 of Caden Berry and the 61 of Matthew Gain will start 18th and on the inside of row number 10 will be the number 22 of Andrew Davis. It is outside the number 39 of Lucas Hinckley. Yes, yeah, starting row 11 here, it's Pitzinger and Leary. 12th is going to be Phillips and uh, the number 60 here of Shane tonight. And 13th, it's Brooks and Young. And the rest of the field going to scroll through there. Al, we are ready to go. 150 laps, green flag is out. We're, bet, we're underway for the first time here tonight for our feature event. Quadro's gonna lead them down through turns one and two, but here comes Ware working to the outside. It's a side-by-side -side battle down at turn number three. Yeah, they work still side-by-side, -side, but it's gonna be Tony Quadro's coming back around here. He will lead lap number one. Here comes the 31 of Brad Carpenter. He is gonna now see if he can take over the second position. And a good starter by everybody in the main event here. We're going to do two laps in your top. It looks like six. I've already single filed out. Alan Young is side by side right now with Kyle Bingham. Bingham going to go sliding up the track just a little bit. Young going to have to take invasive actions. He's going to fall back now into the eighth position. Side by side, side back there. The 91 of Bankowski is there still trying to battle out. Who's going to be inside the top 10 is the 28 green slit. Stuck on the outside is now Bankowski slow off the turn number two as he's going to slide all the way to the back of the field. Yeah, someone having a little bit of an issue there out of turn four. That was Duran. Let's see as he's going to lose out of the 10th position. He'll go all the way to 15th here as they work out of turn number two on lap number five. Everybody has been trying to catch their cars early on. Duran's going backwards in his Ford. Number 35, Duran Motorsports entry here tonight. Now we'll find a home in 15th, but it looks like Caden Berry is uh, going to roll the bottom, and now Duran going to roll the middle lane. So a lot, couple drivers here now already in the early going are choosing to run different lines. Yeah, one driver on pit road early on with a lot of damage was number 60, Sean Bordeaux. And now Tyler Leary and his Napa know-how car are going to make it to there. As we got a side-by-side -side battle for fifth. The number four, Jonathan LeMay, to the inside of Davis. They're side-by-side, wheel-to-wheel down in the turn number three. Off a of turn number four, give it to number four. It'll be LeMay to your fourth spot. Yeah, LeMay takes over that spot. That'll put Davis back into fifth. Swanson there thought about taking it to the inside there on the... Uh, Jeremy Davis entry. He did not break. Rotors are glowing already. It looks like 
Leary is back down pit road once again. A lot of electrical issues, as you would say, Al, on that Tyler Leary machine. He is sitting numerous laps down now in that 24th position as that crew continues to go to work on that machine tonight. Yeah, single file is up for back here. It's a dog fight back there for your 13th, 14th, 15th spot. Now Brian Hoare will take over 13th in his gross number 37. The car down the back stretch is now Milton Duran. He'll take a peek to the inside of the 0 4 a Clark. Is Duran working the inside of the speedway? Got a little bit loose as now they get single filed out. They were side by side throwing punches. And here comes the 0 7 Roger. We saw him working the outside in that last chance qualifier. He's made his way all the way up to the 18th spot. Yes, yeah, he comes back across the start finish line here to complete lap number 12. We'll see if uh, that outside lane for Phillips is going to work out. Remember, he had to come. Uh, he had to fight his way into this one here tonight to see where he was going to line up. And right now, he runs back there in that 18th position. It has been all Tony Quadros in his Illumina. Illumino, number 12 machine out front over the Danny Ware entry. Then it's LeMay and Carpenter still sitting there in fourth. Swanson, oh, as Ware going to slip, that's going to open the door. Here comes LeMay to the outside going into turn three. He'll sit right on the door. Caution flag waving as it looks like Randell Phillips in the 07 is going around here on lap number 16. That'll be the first. Oh, a lot of them parked here on the uh, turn two as the 07 of Randell Phillips tried to get that machine turned back around here, so that's gonna scatter a couple of them, and they're gonna have to now see if they can figure out a way back in. But let's take a look back here. You're looking at the 07 down the back straightaway, as it looks like, I believe this is gonna be out of turn number two is where we're gonna find the incident, as right there you already saw the contact between Phillips and the 61 of Gain. Gain gonna, or Gain gonna continue on. The 07 goes to swing her around here, and as he goes to swing it around, here comes your leaders, and there's Tony Quadros, and he is going to make heavy contact. Brad Carpenter and Kyle Bingham going to make contact. LeMay going to go up against the fence to get around. And they were all scattered through that one. Heavy left front damage on your race leader. The crew up on the wall look, taking a look through the binoculars on the front of that Illumina number 12 car as it looks like Quadros able to continue on. But, Roger, as your race leader, that is the last thing you want to see, the 07 of Carmen trying to get back going and just had nowhere to go. So let's see how things are going to shake up through here because I believe it looks like the Tyler Larry machine will get one lap back. So he will be now shown, I believe, three laps down on our timing and scoring. As we wait to see how that all shakes out here. But hey, we do welcome everybody in here on the Turn 3 Racing Network here tonight. Muth up here in the booth. My good friend Al here from the upstate New York area. Joining us here for the Northeast Racers, Elfod Motorsports Group. We hope you're all enjoying the show here from the Southern National Motorsports Park. But just like that, Al, we're going to get back to the loud pedal here in just a moment. Out of turn two, the lights are already off on the pace car. Yeah, I feel doubling up to the... The big question mark right now for the number 12 is how's that car going to handle once we get back green flag racing after that contact to the field. Doubling up, pace car on the pit road. We're back green flag off a of turn number four. And then Quadros is going to get a nice jump over LeMay. LeMay going to charge it back in the turn number two. On the outside, they'll be side by side down the back stretch. And they're on the backstretch into turn number three. They come this time. It is still going to be Tony Quadros to the inside, but how much damage is done to that number 12 machine here tonight? He is able to hold off Jonathan LeMay as LeMay is going to slip off turn two. So does Tony Quadros. So they will once again battle back into turn number three. LeMay looks like he can charge the corner. Now it looks like Jonathan LeMay going to take the lead here on lap 22. LeMay working the outside. Here comes Ware now on the outside with his Tony Quadros sponsor, number 28. He'll work to the outside of his sponsors and come off turn number four. Contact deeper in the field. Brad Carpenter going up the track along with the 77 of Bingham. They're going to lose a lot of ground because we've got them three wide in the turn two. Everybody a little stacked up there, I believe. That's the 55 of Willis. The 31 of Carpenter going to go around, and that's going to bring out the next caution here of the night. So as Brad Carpenter spins around his 31, That'll put us under our second caution flag here of the evening. We will queue up the replay here in just a second and see what was happening back there. A lot of racing action. Oh, it looks like 
sideways. Bingham was into the 31 there down in turn three. And then let's see, is the, does the issue carry on here? What happened to Brad Carr? Oh, he just loses the rear end. And, and that's what's uh, love. Maybe a little contact there actually from the 04 being assessed to Carpenter. So Clark and Carpenter making contact then down in three and four. A lot of hard-nosed racing there though, Al. <laughs> that was, there, there was a, uh, a caution coming regardless at so one point sooner or later. Yeah, I don't know how, how they even made it down to turn three. They went in the turns one and two, three and four wide, and I can't believe I'm even saying that here at the Southern National Raceway. These guys are putting on one well of a show for us, and uh, they were three, four wide stacked up down in the turns one and two. They somehow managed to make it through there. And now they're pacing here after we see the incident between Brad Carpenter and the 04 of Blake Clark with just 28 laps completed here tonight, Roger. It's been one heck of a, a hectic start as we got Duran coming off pit road in his number 35. So right now that'll put Duran then in that 22nd position and... Uh... 24 cars still remaining. It looks like Randall Phillips has loaded up the 07 here tonight. So we are a minus one driver tonight so far. So it's LeMay now that has found himself out front. We have had three different leaders. It has been Tony Quadros out front for 20 laps. He'll restart there in second with his number 12. Then we have had Jonathan LeMay for seven and Danny Ware has led. One lap is where we'll double them back up here on lap 30. It'll be 120 laps to go when we go back green flag racing. Working closer and closer to that halfway point of the race as we are working the lap 31 once the green flag comes back out. LeMay and Quadros on the front row. Green flag is back out. LeMay with a good jump and Quadros is able to stay right with him. Quadros will throw it down in the, on the outside. Here comes Swanson in that number three car. They run side by side with Blair down in the turns three and four. It'll be Dagnall in that number 23 Air Jordan's car rounding out your top five as we get into lap 32 off of turn number two. Tony Quadros was able to hold on to the second position, but Danny Ware and then the Swanson entry will continue to work the side-by-side -side action for the third spot. Contact down into one, going to send Swanson up the track. He'll lose the third position. Now he's going to be in jeopardy here to lose the fourth position because Dagnott's going to throw the Jordan number 23 down there to that inside, and he will have him at the line, but it is a battle a little bit farther back here. David Green slid to the inside on Zach Nicholson. That's the seventh and eighth position. They are still side by side. Everybody else in front of them have single filed out. Now it looks like Greenslick gonna try and slide up in front of him at the start finish line. He does. Here comes Kyle Bingham in the 77 machine. Yeah, Bingham took a look to the inside, filling the hole that Greenslick had made. And now the 61 car of game trying to do the same thing as they work underneath Nicholson through turns one and two. That's the battle side by side right now off the corner. That's the battle for your ninth and 10th position. Here comes Gain in the 61. He's free. The 34 Nicholson in a world of hurt right now, being stuck on the outside. Now Nicholson with a nice run off of turn number two, who almost has been cleared in the three. That outside lane now here, since we've run a couple laps back under the green flag, circumstances have started to come in, as you can see. Uh, Nicholson getting a good run to that outside there on the 77 of Bingham and taking a look at that Northeast Racer 77 of Bingham. There is a lot of heavy front end damage as he was in a lot of that uh, scuffle down in turn one back in the early stages of this race. That's what put that on that car is now he's sideways out of turn number two. I was just about to say he has pulled back even with the 34 of Zach Nicholson, but now he is sideways once again off for it. Now he will give up that position to Zach Nicholson will go now to eighth. Bingham will hold on to the ninth position, but just behind them was another battle. Matthew Gain will actually take that spot and look at Bingham. He's going to... Oh, trouble! Yeah, sideways right in there as they scatter. Caution flag going to come out. Looked like maybe just the 77 overshot that corner, and that's what's going to bring us to this yellow flag. And let's quickly uh, throw her back here on our turn three replay. We have it queued. We were watching the battle, so you did see it going over top here, watching that black 
34 and the white 77. Bingham knew he overdrew drove that corner there because he absolutely just slammed on the brakes afterwards and everybody had to scatter. So we'll see where Kyle Bingham, it looks like he will receive an EOL penalty here now. Tough break, Spaz. That was a battle inside your top 10. That just shows you how hard these drivers are really pushing it out there, trying to get every little inch that they can, Roger, here at Southern Nationals. We work lap number 43. Yeah, and as we work lap 43 here tonight, closing in on that halfway point, uh, racers here tonight could take tires after lap 75 at the halfway marker. If caution came out at 75, they could take the tires. If uh, the caution doesn't come out at 75 and it comes out at 100, that would be their only chance to take tires. So it's the first caution after lap 75 for these drivers tonight. And uh, the way the race pace is trending, we uh, might see another caution yet before we get to that halfway marker tonight at the Southern National Motorsports Park. 22 cars still on the lead lap. Looks like the 56 of Leary might have taken the Napa car behind Pit Road is the 60 of Charm Bordeaux still on Pit Road. Looks like they've stopped working on that car. So Bordeaux possibly out of tonight's feature event as well. Roger, so 22 cars left onto the racetrack all on the lead lap. So as we saw, anything can happen. A little bit of contact here and there, and a lot of rubbing the rails, per se, uh, so far in this feature event has really led to a lot of comers and goers through the midsection of this field. Yeah, right now they're going to line them up as the iRacing pace car lights do go back out. It'll be Jonathan LeMay, Tony Quadro, Danny Ware, Tegan Dagna, Matt Swanson, Alan Young, David Greenslip, Matthew Gain, Kyle Willis, and Caden Barry. Right now we'll round out your top 10 cars here as the iRacing pace car lights are going to come back on a couple drivers not in their scheduled starting positions as the timing and scoring. So we will pop it up. You will be able to see where your driver is running as we get one more lap here under caution. Once again, we got to thank our one of our uh, sponsors tonight we got to thank the new hampshire short track racing association for lee hudson manadoc and claremont motorsports park all four of those tracks up there in new hampshire play a key role in a lot of these drivers out here in the uh, abilities that they have on the iRacing platform al getting ready to go back green racing here on lap one or on lap 48 yeah they're gonna smash the gas pedal off turn number four quadros and lemay side by side drag race down in the turns one and two, it'll be LeMay showing away. Danny Ware, a little bit out of shape. May Dagno take a little evasive action off turn number two. They keep it clean and green, side by side through the corner. Dagno working the outside of Ware, back there for your third position. Yeah, they're side by side from the third position on back. Somebody is sideways back here. It looks like the 91 of Justin Benkowski has gone around. Here comes the 09 of Jeremy Davis. He'll spin around in that Davis entry, so we will have to go back and see what happened to Justin Benkowski because he does get that 91 pointed back in the right direction. Uh, let's take a quick look back here on this restart here. I believe the trailer says we have it. What does it have? It has the 91 of Benkowski going down into the corner. And oh, he gets a little help from the 34. And that's going to turn around Benkowski. He hits the outside wall and then Jeremy Davis just comes sliding in there. He doesn't hit anything, but a lot of tire wear damage now to that 09 machine. Yeah, Davis looked like he checked up on that one, Roger, and the 30 of Pitzinger had just nowhere to go and just uh, center punched the back bumper of that Davis number 09 car. Not a good night so far, but it's early yet as we are only one third of the way through this field, a race. Here, so your points leader not having a very good night as he finds himself back in the 19th position. Yeah, that, that is a rough night, especially, I'm not sure what happened to Jeremy Davis that put him way behind the eight ball. I believe he was scheduled to start inside that top 10, and you would have guessed for that 09 machine to really uh, stay up there, because so far in the two races that we have covered here on the Turn 3 Racing Network, Jeremy Davis has been one of the quicker racers tonight, though. Closing in on that halfway point, he is going to have to pick up the pace, and or maybe, uh, as the old saying is, find a hole where they ain't. Yeah, uh, he was slated to start fourth, currently running in your 19th position, Roger. So, uncharacteristic night for the 09, just maybe an off night. Everybody's entitled to have one, but just a very, very uncharacteristic for the 09 of Jeremy Davis. He's been a front runner 
all season long with one driver that's up front is the number four of Jonathan LeMay. Is they going to double him up as the lights have gone out on the Mustang pace car? So that'll leave us with 96 laps here from the Southern National Motorsports Park when we hit the gas pedal to get back to the green flag racing tonight for your main event in your Elfod Motorsports Northeast Racers. As the iRacing pace car is down and away and the green flag comes out just like that, we are back to green flag racing here at Southern National and it was a good start by Tony Quadros to the outside lane, but it looks like it will be Jonathan LeMay that's going to take the lead out of turn number two and once again doing the side-by-side -side battle, it will be the 28 of Danny Ware in that 42 or 23. Whatever you see race fans on the timing and scoring, you can believe it is Tyler or Tegan Dagnot down there in that Jordan entry and once again, they are side by side into turn number three. Still side by side, they come on turn number four. That time at the line will be Dagnall all over the 28 of Ware. Now we'll swap it back off turn number two. Is they're still having, they're still fighting out who wants to be in the third spot. Swanson trying to figure out which lane is going to go. That time a little contact off a of turn number four. That allow Dagnall to get on by along with Swanson. Here comes Young in the 24. He'll work to the inside of Ware. But where will slam the door shut on him? And that advance made all those greens to keep the back bumper of Young as they took off lap number 59. So the laps are counting down here as now they have single filed out all around the speedway. It looks like you got to go back here to the Brad Carpenter number 31 machine. He is running 14th. He is looking to the inside of Andrew Davis in that Pontiac entry. That Pontiac 20. Two has a little bit of nose damage. Brand new colors on the Andrew Davis machine. And they are running back there in that 13th and 14th position. Nobody is trying to pull out the uh, the old dive bomb just yet. It looks like everybody has worked themselves into a little bit of a groove as Jonathan LeMay continues to lead here at Southern Avenue. Yeah, LeMay stretching out his lead is now the 0-9 of Jeremy Davis is working the back bumper of Clark, but now it's a three-car battle with Brad Carpenter for your 13th spot as Bingham has found his 77 back up into the 15th spot. He's trying to find a way around as the one car in front of him gets down to the wall. Looks like it was the number uh, Hinkley in the 39 had issues off turn number four. It keeps it rolling, will stay green, but dropping the 39 of Hinkley back to the 21st position. So Hinkley gonna have to see if he can now work his way back through the field but it is all up no somebody sideways back there was that the uh three machine of swanson it looked like he was all the way down almost touching the inside wall on the back straight away and uh, you know it's not one of those plays like they're trying to get away from the draft on somebody so definitely sideways for the three of swanson as we work lap 66 now here tonight at southern national and everybody has single filed out officially. There is no side-by-side -side action right now on the track. One of your biggest movers through the field, though, is going to be the 20 of David Greenslit in his cabinetry, or Vermont cabinetry machine. And right now runs in that seventh spot. Right behind him is Matthew Gain and then Kyle Willis, Caden Berry. For all you Caden Berry fans out there, he is running currently in the 10th position. Still working around the speedway, Swanson in your fourth spot is Barry. It sits there in your tenth spot. Right behind him is the eight-time Canadian champ, American Canadian Tour champion, Brian Hoare making a nice run in that number 37. He finds himself in the eleventh position, and that is all in front of that battle for your thirteenth position. Brad Carpenter all over Andrew Davis, trying to find a way around. Yeah, you know, you talked about it earlier, Al. It's one thing to get there, and it's another thing to get around. Carpenter showed really fast speed in his heat race. He was able to, to win it, lead wire to wire, and then had that little bit of an issue here in the main event. And now he has found himself running back here in that 13th spot with a faster car than Andrew Davis. Just cannot get around him. Another Davis making headway is the 0-9 of Jeremy Davis. He's side-by-side side with Clark in the 0-4. Right behind him, he's got Milton Duran in that 35 car tagging along as they make contact down to turn three. Clark up the racetrack. That's going to give the position to Davis. So now Davis takes over that 16th spot. So now where will Milton Duran slot himself in because Blake Clark has a fast 0-4 machine but it looks like it will be Duran being able to hold off that strong competitor just a little bit farther behind them in case you were keeping track on your timing and scoring that's the 34 there of Zach Nicholson remember Zach was involved in that incident got assessed an EOL penalty and had not 
has not been able to pick up any positions and now is on the verge, only four seconds ahead of your leader here tonight of Jeremy LeMay, who will be working his way into lap traffic in just a couple laps. Battle shaping up for your eighth spot. Now is the number 61 of Gaines. We got trouble, this is 22 of Davis around and the 31 of Carpenter involved as well down in the turn number one. So two cars turned around down into turn number one. That'll bring out our fifth caution here of the night. And Al taking a look at the timing and scoring. This will be the moment that all these drivers were waiting for. Well, let's first take a quick gander back here and check the turn three racing replay. As you see, the 31 and the 22, they were side by side. Little contact there from Carpenter. Bingham going to get involved in that. And I believe nobody else, as everybody else was able to uh, either slow up or get around so the three-car incident here at the halfway marker as everybody now will be down pit road. Yeah, the four of LeMay in his pit box. Right sides are up. He'll pull away. I believe they're going to be able to come down again. As we've seen in earlier races with this series, they're only allowed to come down pit road once, but for the nature of the track, I believe race control is going to allow them to come back down if they want as LeMay has taken his right sides as he comes back around the speedway. By the four of Jonathan LeMay. Gonna tag into the back of the field here, see if he comes back down pit road, or maybe he'll do the two car the two tire tango here at the Southern National Raceway. It looks like he's gonna come back down pit road though, Roger. Yeah, it looks like everybody will come down here and try and make sure they get those uh, four tires on their machines here tonight. Which is probably a good choice. A couple of them gonna play the strategy though. It looks like Swanson. Uh, maybe he had already taken those four tires. I'm not quite sure. Uh, he took two tires, Roger. Matt Swanson and uh, David Greenslet staying out onto the racetrack for now has taken the two tire stint. Is it uh, Jeremy Davis and the 09 has taken four? Same with the 42 of Tegan Dagnall. So we'll have to wait and see how scoring shakes out after this, after this one uh, as the field gets straightened out here but they uh but yeah about 20 22 23 seconds they can get four tires and uh, some fuel in in these super late models so i'm going to say that swanson and greenslet only taking right side tires same with the 39 of lucas hinkley so uh, it looks like some good strategy plays being out there and it looks like your race leader didn't even come down pit road yeah, it looks like Caden Berry. I was going to see if we could dial up the driver of the 85, but I don't see Caden Berry out there to talk to. So what do you say we see if we can dial up the driver of the 20? Because uh, the lights on that iRacing pace car are still on. So let's see if we get a word in with David Greenslit here real quick. Dave, two-tire stop for that number 20? Yeah, I'm going to try it. I uh, need a little bit better track position here, so we'll see. You think the two tires will be able to hold off those guys back there with four tires? Uh, it's hard to tell. Track position's everything right now. It's real hard to pass. So, Is that bottom groove starting to rubber up there on that long run? Are you going to have to work to the outside, or is it still going to be a bottom-feeding track here at Southern National? I think the outside's going to come into it. It's um, starting to rubber up a little bit, and uh, the little bit that I've ventured out there seems fairly decent. Well, there you hear it, Al. The outside may be coming in here in just a little bit as the iRacing pace car lights will go out this time by. So we will put Dave back down there in his group and uh, double file they are. Double file. It looks like I believe we're going to be going this time by or the lights are still on. I can't tell, Roger. It looks like the uh, lights are off from our point of view and it does look like the iRacing pace car is going to make the left turn. Green flag is back out here tonight at Southern National. Just over the halfway mark, everybody has the set of tires that they are going to be on for the rest of the night as Caden Berry gets a really good start. He is actually going to be able to gap just a little bit there on uh, Kyle Bingham. Bingham, though, on that same strategy of no tires, and he will be able to hold on to that second position. Your top four have single filed out. It's Jonathan LeMay doing the battle right now with the 39 of Lucas Hinckley. 
Yeah, LeMay's the first driver on a speedway that has four fresh Mr. Goodfields as they work down the speed and around the corner. He's worked himself into your sixth position. Here comes Swanson underneath the 77 of Bingham. That'll take that spot easily. And here comes Greenslet now ready to pounce on the 77 of Bingham off of turn number four. Right now, those tires for the 77 of Kyle Bingham are not playing into his favor. He needs a lot of green flag laps and quick. There's a lot of these drivers to start to slide their tires for him to hold on as we are working now. I believe this is our fourth lap back to the green flag, and it is still Caden Berry, but the battle is back here with Jonathan LeMay and Matthew Gain. Gain thought to go to the inside there, didn't have quite enough of the run. Hinkley, though, is side by side. Sideways for Tony Quadros back here for the 11th position. He has four fresh tires, and he was just jacked up in turn four. Contact with Duran right in front of him. That, that, that battle was happening on the three of Swanton. Made a little bit of bumper tag with your race leader of Barry, and everybody keeping it clean and green, but that allowed the 77 of Bingham to close back in. But now Swanson right back to the back bumper as the yellow flag will fly once again. Yeah, it looks like Blake Clark has pointed the wrong direction. Zach Nichols, or Nicholson, was also a little bit slow down there on lap 90 of the night's race. And that will bring us to our sixth caution flag here at the Southern National Motorsports Park tonight for the Northeast Racers. Uh, let's cue that one up. The producer says it's going to be a good one here. Let's cue it and see. As it looks like that 04 machine was battling with Andrew Davis. I believe that was also right there for about the uh, 13th position. Davis going to get into him, and then the 04 going to go around and nowhere for... Uh, Nicholson to go. So Nicholson piles in there. I believe we actually do have an Elfod Motorsports onboard camera and the roll bar here of Zach Nicholson. See it all happen down into turn number one. There was nowhere that Nicholson was going to get away from that. No, and the 39 of Hinkley has come down pit road, Roger, and it looks like he has taken four tires which is, I believe, against the rules. So we'll have to see what uh, race officials will do with that as the 39 of Hinkley has taken tires here under this yellow flag as he got into trouble. But race leader, that was really starting to shape up. Swanson, with those two fresh right side tires, had, well, was laying the pressure to the 85 of Caden Berry, who is your race leader as we work lap number 94. Yeah, so closing in on just 50 laps to go here. Caden Berry has that no-tire strategy. He's out front. Swanson is on the two tires. Kyle Bingham is on no tires. David Greenslit is two tires. Then it's Jonathan LeMay, the first driver on four tires, and he is going to restart in that fifth position. It looks like we will go back to green flag racing next time. Bye. Keynote here at the inside your front two rows, no tires on the green and the, the pit stop caution. The outside of those rows all have right side tires. Jonathan LeMay, the first driver with four fresh tires on the number four car, sitting fifth. So we'll see how they go. Green flag drops, and we're back underway. Swanson with a nice jump. He's going to take the race lead away from the 85 of Barry. Here comes Greenslit to his outside. He'll single file your top three. Side by side with Bingham and the 28 aware as the yellow flag will fly once again. It looks like the 0-4 of Blake Clark involved once again. Yeah, he looks like he's going to get the 0-4 Catamount machine back on track, but now he will be shown a little bit farther back. We will throw it back here and check out what happened as he was at the rear of the field. Though Jonathan LeMay had a little bit of connection issue. I see Jonathan LeMay back here towards the back, and the 0-4 just kind of loses it all on his own, and around he goes. And that's what's going to bring out our seventh caution flag here of the night, just a single car spin on lap 96. Getting close to notch off two-third point of this race, as this time I'll be lap 99. Looks like the 22 of Andrew Davis. We'll get our lucky dog recipient. So he'll get back on the lead lap. That'll put 19 cars on the lead lap with 23 cars still making circuits around the speedway. The 60 of Sean Bordeaux has made his way back out onto the speedway to log some laps, try to gain some spots. 
Two retirees, Roger Tyler Leary and a 07 of Randall Phillips, have both been retired here tonight. The 04 of Clark will be here on the pit road. Yeah, so Davis will tag the rear of the field here in his Pontiac, and Swanson still up front. Barry is second, Greenslit is third, Bingham will be fourth, Danny Ware is fifth, Alan Young is sixth, Milton Duran is seventh, Tony Quadros is eighth, Kyle Willis is ninth, and Brian Hoare, the ACT champion, is sitting there in your tenth position. Dagnall is outside the top ten, and along with Jeremy Davis, Jonathan LeMay, a couple of those drivers that were out front a lot of this race now find themselves buried back in the field and it's going to be under 50 laps to go and we have seen laps here tonight click off right around oh almost 14 seconds flat and under so it's going to be hard for those guys to make their way back through the field here as we're going to go green flag racing this time by 49 laps to go 49 to go as they come to turns three and four the pace car will drop into the pace into the infield green flag is back out side by side swanson and the 85 of barry Barry will stay to the uh, is outside, but it'll be Swanson being able to claim. Here comes Greenslit on the inside of Bingham. They're side by side, and Danny Ware throwing it down in the turn number four. Yeah, Danny Ware is going side by side with Kyle Bingham. That's the battle for the fourth spot as we look off the back here upon the Ware and the Bingham. Bingham going to go up into the wall out of turn number two. He's just going to square up that right side of that race car a little bit more, but now he's going to have Milton Duran right there to battle with, and Duran has been working his way slowly through this field here tonight. He is now gonna take over that fifth position. And trouble for the 55 of Kyle Willis. He had to check up in one and two. He's stuck on the tire barrier there and turns one and two as he backs out onto the speedway trying to get back going. We all stay clean and green, but tough break for the 55 of Willis is now Greenslet has worked around where he will move into the third spot as he looks to chase down Caden Berry. That time Carpenter gets sideways once again. Everybody makes it clean and green. Now the Dagnall hits the inside wall on the backstretch. Dagnall. Part 42. Yeah, Dagnall going to go around there, back running about the 13th position to bring out the caution flag here. Caution flag number seven here at Southern National. Uh, we will have to see because we didn't catch what happened to the 42 of Tegan Diagnol, so let's throw it back here and see what happened to the Jordan Sportswear entry tonight. He was battling with the 91 of Benkowski and around. Oh, Carpenter was going around, and when Diagnol went to go back on the track as they stayed green, the car just kind of got upset down to the inside wall. It goes. Dagnall in that 42 machine. So now he's got a little damage on that and he's going to be even farther behind the eight ball now. And our lucky dog recipient will be the number 39 of Lucas Henley. As he works around the field, he'll get back on lead lap. So that'll put us back to 19 cars on the lead lap here, Roger, with just under 40 laps to go. Well, just under 40 laps to go. Let's see if we can grab a quick interview with one of the drivers that are out there. Let's see if we can get a word in with Milton Duran. Milton, you got a copy. It's Muth and Smith up here in the booth. That far, I got you. Well, you got us, my friend. That 35 car looking really racy tonight. You worked your way now into the top five. Can you get around a couple of these guys like Ware and Greenslit and Barry Swanson, who has been leading here now? Um, We're going to see. I mean, we, uh, we only took two tires. It's getting a little tight, but... Uh... Saved our car most of the race, right in back in the back with Davis. So, hey, see what the end brings us. So, are you saying you have enough in that car? That car? Of course, I do. Well, I thought that's what he was trying to tell me. But hey, Milton, good luck the rest of the way here as the I Racing Pace Car lights will go out. Thank you, boss. Have a good one. I like the confidence there, Roger, of Milton Duran. Sitting in your fifth spot, said he was planning the ride in the back there with Jeremy Davis. Let's take a look. Jeremy Davis up to your 12th spot as the green flag is back out. We're back underway. Swanson and Barry back on the loud pedal. 
And as they go back out into the loud pedal, it looks like Swanson will take the lead coming out of turn number two. And actually, here comes the Danny Ware machine. That 28 is going to powerhouse around David Greenslit, put himself into third. Look who's back to running in the seventh position as Greenslit slides just a little bit. There is the number 12 entry of Tony Quadros. He had your quick time here tonight. Got wrapped up in a little incident and then had to, uh, on that yellow flag pit stop at the halfway marker, put four tires on and has now had to charge back through the field. Finds himself running side by side with Kyle Bingham for that seventh position. Yeah, side by side for seventh is now Young has worked around the 20 of Greenslade. Here comes Duran now trying to follow suit as they come off turn number four. They single filed it up, but still side by side. Quadros working the outside as yellow flag comes out once again. Yeah, it looks like Zach Nicholson has gone around here, and I believe is that the Kyle Willis entry of the night. So both them drivers involved here. Caution flag number eight flying. Uh, let's take it back here on this turn three racing replay and see what happened between those two drivers. Those two drivers running back there a lap down at the tail of the field, battling for that lucky dog position. See a little contact there from the 04 Clark to the 34's rear end, and then what happens as they are three wide going down into the next corner, the 55 into the quarter panel there on the 34, and then uh, all heck kind of broke loose. Getting to that point of the race, Roger, we're almost down to 30 laps to go here tonight at the Southern National Speedway. Swanson looking to pick up the first win of the season. Barry right there also looking for it. Danny Ware, Ellen Young, our last week's winner, is in your fourth spot. He's come out of nowhere, Roger. Yeah, he came back up through on that final restart there that we just had. He had picked up three positions, got around Duran, got around Greenslit, and got around Quadro. So he now finds himself back up into the front of the field here. And I believe looking through it, he has four fresh tires himself along with Danny Ware. So those two having fresh tires. I'm still wondering, though, Al, we talked about Jonathan LeMay a little bit ago. He, he led... 54 laps here in the early stages of this. And then he came down for pit road for four tires. He was going to restart inside the top 10. And all of a sudden, he was at the back of the field and now is still sitting 13th. Yeah, he's been able to pick up a couple spots here on these yellows, but not being able to make the progress that I think uh, LeMay was looking to have with those four fresh tires uh, as he sits there behind the 61 of Matthew Gain. As he'll start on the inside row, Roger, but we've seen the outside on the restart seem to be the, the line that you want to be in. They've been able to keep the momentum up and they get a nice run off of turn number two. But here's the question. Are you going to be able to clear the cars that are to your inside on that outside? So LeMay may have the position as we're going to go back green flag this time off four. High racing pace car down on the way, and Swanson going to hit the gas first here. It looked like Barry maybe spun the tires. Here comes Danny Ware looking down to the inside, and it looks like he will have it out of turn number two as Barry is going to slide high with a crossover move into three. He will check up as it will be. Swanson, Ware, and Barry, your top three as we go back to green flag racing. David Greaves in contact with Alan Young. Young is going to go up the track. He's going to lose a bunch of positions. Yeah, and you saw Bingham right there kind of check up. They knew that coming off the corner three wide was not going to be the right answer. As now Young follows behind the 12 of Quadros. Quadros taking a look underneath the 35 of Milton. They're still side by side back there. Then Kelsey and Bingham. Then it's Davis and Hoare. Then LeMay and Gain side by side around turn four. Throw the blanket over these guys, all battling from about the seventh position. Sideways goes Jeremy Davis. Davis is going to go around and they're going to scatter around him. Davis tried slamming the door shut on Brian Hoare, and Hoare was not expecting that, and contact was made as we take a look here on the turn three replay. Taking it back, it was the Hornet's Nest back here talking about the two wide racing action, watching that bright, or the black car with a bright blue 09 on the side of it. That is Jeremy Davis. Let's see where the contact really happens here. See the 37 of Hoare down to the inside lane with his RPM 37. And just that little check up there going down into the corner. Chain reaction is what's going to send the 09 of Jeremy Davis around. So that now will be caution number nine of the evening. Closing in on that 25 laps to go 
And this is the short track racing that you would expect with that little lap count left. So it looks like the 37 of Brian Hoare are going to be motioned to go to the rear of the field as the flagman points to his bottom. So the RPM racing engines cost entry of Brian Hoare will be headed to the back where Jeremy Davis has uh, slid back in here also. So not the night that your current points leader coming in tonight was looking for. And everybody that he's racing for in the points is not having a great night either, Roger. Yeah, a couple of those guys, like Jonathan LeMay, to be exact, is is outside the top 10 currently, too. So, you know, maybe it's not a, a night that you really wanted, but it's not a night that you're really going to have to worry about points-wise as everybody's going to start to find a home. So it is still Matt Swanson right there out front leading tonight here at Southern National. He has been out front here for 34 laps, and he will click off another one here under caution. Then it is Danny Ware, Caden Berry, David Greenslip will be your fourth car on this restart. Milton Duran and Tony Quadros, Alan Young, Justin Benkowski, Kyle Bingham, and Matthew Gain will round out the top 10. It's going to be 21 laps to go here, and that two-tire stop right now has still been pretty good here for Matt Swanson. Yeah, the top four, or top four cars on the gas pedal now is where right to the back bumper of Swanson through one and two, trying to work that high side, trying to get that momentum. Andrew Anthony Williams Swanson will take that number three car out front. Where is in second? Now side by side back there for your third spot. Greenslick got a little bit loose up there for. Greenslick gonna lose ground to that outside there as, oh, Durant there a little sideways. As Duran gathers back up the 35, now here comes Alan Young. How things can change. Remember when Young got booted up the track just a little while ago? Now he works his way back into the top five, and now Greenslip will work his way in front of Quadros. Quadros going to hit the wall there. I think he got a little bump there from the 77. A Bingham send Quadros up into the outside wall. Now will the 77 be able to clear the number 12, and he will out of turn number two. And right there behind the number 12 is the four of Jonathan LeMay. LeMay starting to make some moves back to the front. And behind him is the 91 of Bankowski. And the 31 of Brad Carpenter rolling his way back towards the front of this one. Jeremy Davis and 09 working right there in front of Dagnall is the 12 of Quadros. Troubles once again off turn number two. He's losing multiple spots here. Yeah, I think it think, uh, looks like maybe a little... Uh tire damage to the 12 of Quadros. He has to cool that front right tire down so he can find his way back into the line. Jeremy Davis back there trying to get around Dagnall. Dagnall not inside your top 20 right now. Actually, he's running 20th one lap down, so that is not the battle for position. Right in front of this group, though, it has gained in the 61, and Carpenter in the 31. Carpenter will take that position over the Jägermeister 61, but he will slip out of turn four. Here comes the 61 back down to the inside. Okay, taking the peak to the inside, earning the 31 of Carpenter as LeMay has gotten by Bingham. Now here comes the 91 of Bankowski working on his Bingham. Quadros right to the back bumper of Bankowski as we got him three wide. Jeremy Davis taking a peek to the inside of the 61 of Kent. Action all around the, nat to the national speedway here. Yeah, and the closest battle to the front of your leaders who are still single file here with going to get 12 to go. It's going to be Justin Minkowski to the inside here of the 77 of Kyle Bingham. They're worked down into the corner, still side by side. Here comes the 91 of Minkowski. You know, somebody in front of the leaders here into the wall. Somebody going to go around Alan Young. It's sideways. Oh, Green slit, nowhere to go. Couple of your front runners here tonight getting close to that 10 lap to go trying to push their cars on edge will bring us to a halt once again and let's take it back on the replay what happened i believe durant may have uh, or duran had maybe touched the outside wall on turn two we we'll have to take it back here and look though they were all battling right here for right around the fifth position at the time of incident See the 35 up into the outside wall, drifts down the track, gets the 24. Green slit tried to dive in there, gonna make contact with the 24, and then he's gonna get wadded up. So does Milton. And it looks like I think Green Slit had a ton of damage to that Vermont cabinetry. Alphod Motorsports number 20 entry here tonight, and that car was dog walking away. Yeah, tough, tough break here. But look who's into the fourth spot, Roger. Remember just about 20 laps ago, we were saying what happened to Jonathan LeMay? Well, 
he's back inside the top five. He's going to restart in this restart in the fourth position. So it'll be a shootout to the end here. I'm guessing it's going to be about call it about five laps to go when we go back to the green flag. Jonathan LeMay will insert himself back into the top five. He had sliced and diced his way around. Alan Young will restart back there in fifth. Question being, how much damage has been done to that 24 entry tonight now? He was hard into that outside wall. The front, Both front fenders on that 24 car look pretty tore up. Yeah, he's got a lot of front end damage, but maybe, just maybe, he will be fine. He looked like he was doing pretty good there on that last run, Roger, but a little bit of contact at the end there. As we see the three of Swanson running the inside of the racetrack, Roger. What's he doing doing that for? I think uh, Swanson may be trying to cool those tires off. You and I both know that tire temperature is probably one of the biggest factors here on the iRacing platform as those lights will go out. So it'll be Swanson, Ware, Barry, LeMay, your front four cars here on this restart. And now it's going to be five laps to go. That is a shootout if I've ever seen one here at the Southern National Motorsports Park. Yeah, and the lights have come back on the iRacing pace car, so we'll go one more lap. So just builds up the tension again. Out there watching on turn three racing network, who thinks Swanson is going to hold on to the win? Or is it going to be Danny Ware? Or is it going to be someone behind them? Barry, is it going to be LeMay, Young, Mankowski? It could be any of these guys that are starting inside the top ten. Yeah, and just remember, race fans, Caden Barry in that 85 will restart on the second row to the inside. He is on the same tires from the drop of the green flag here tonight as the iRacing pace car is down and away. Green flag racing, four laps to go here at Southern National, and it looks like Swanson got a great start. So did Danny Ware and Jonathan LeMay. They will look the charge away here as they're actually now back side by side. Danny Ware thought for a moment to go single file. He says, no, nope, three laps to go, side by side for the lead. Side by side, scratching and clawing on the outside. Here comes the 28 of Ware. He's working the outside of the speedway. We got trouble in the back of the field. Yellow flag is going to be out. And let's see who was scored as your leader as they were side by side. Now, woo! Yeah, How action, about that, race fans? Action, action, packed at the front as the bank was starting to open up. It looks like the Hinkley 39 machine may have been the one involved here. And the 22 of Andrew Davis. Let's go back and see. There you see Davis in front of him. And let's see where the contact is enabled here tonight. Over top, watching down on that 39 machine. There you see the 04 into the 22. And the 22 snaps back and... Hits the 39, the 55 there of Willis comes to a complete stop as he touches the wall barely. So that will now take us to overtime here with that caution flag tonight. I can't take much more of this. I'm on, my heart is beating, Roger. Well, everybody's excited. They want to know who's going to win the race here for the Northeast Racers presented by the Elfon Motorsports here from Southern National Motorsports Park. As Al, I, I'm not sure at this point who is going to win this race tonight because Danny Ware runs in the front, front position here. He was scored at the time of that caution as our leader. Then it's going to be Swanson, LeMay, Barry. So Barry and LeMay are going to swap positions. Or, yeah, LeMay and Barry will swap their positions. So you just take the outside cars and put them to the inside, the inside cars to the outside because that's the same for their front row. We saw Ware be able to hold down Swanson, trying to pinch him off, break his momentum. Swanson with that terminal trucking company number three, he is going to remember that. I guarantee it, Roger, as we get ready to come back to this restart here. They pace around. But Ware was keeping him honest on the outside, but the leader does get lane choice. And for the first time tonight, the leader will choose the outside on this restart. So an interesting strategy here by Danny Ware taking the outside. We will see if Swanson remembers what just happened on that last restart because it'll be overtime attempt number one here tonight. Going to go five laps past the scheduled distance. I racing pace car is down and away, and we are green flag racing in overtime and a little bit of a slower start for Danny Ware that time to the outside because Swanson got a really good start. Sideways, one of them going around. Benkowski in the 91. Caution flag coming back out. 
Caution back out in the 37 of Horde to 42. Uh, Dagnall getting turned after the yellow flag is out, so I believe they'll get their positions back. But how about that? The 91 of Bankowski got tagged on the restart there. We're back under green, or back under the yellow flag for the 10th time here tonight. Yeah, let's take it back here and look from our overtop what just happened back there for the driver of the 91 of Justin Benkowski. He was scheduled to restart there. You see the third car to the outside. That 91 machine got a good restart. And, oh, he's going to get a tag from the 12 of Quadros, and then they all gathered it up, and then it was just on. You see the 35 of Duran going to come through there. He's going to make contact with a couple of them. You saw the 37 of Brian Hoare was involved in that one also. Uh, terminal damage to the 91 of Benkowski. It looks like the steering broke on that machine after the hard contact that he had. So he will now end up taking it to the garage here at the end of this one. That is a rough night for the driver of the 91. Yeah, tough, tough break for that team as they had a really solid run. Looking for a very solid finish here tonight, Roger. And it just uh, didn't turn out that way. So a tough break for them as they'll see the 55 of Willis getting a lap back I believe so he'll get one of his laps back now it'll be one back to the spot I'm not sure we are done seeing yellows I don't believe so here in our feature event here tonight for the Northeast Racers presented by the Elfod Motorsports Group looking at the timing and scoring 18 drivers still on the lead lap and I think now 18 drivers may have a shot here on this restart I think anything is possible, but right now what will be interesting, Swanson got the race lead at the point of the yellow flag, so but he'll choose the inside once again, Roger. So that'll give the 28 of where the outside line where he's been very strong all night long. It'll, so it must be Swanson fair, believes he's much better on the bottom as we're going to go green flag. This time we're back underway. Green flag back in the air, and Danny, we're going to get a much better restart here. Two laps to go here for your Northeast Racers here from the Southern National Motorsports Park, and Ware's going to scrape the wall with the right rear coming out of turn number two. This time by, it'll be one to go, but they're going to stack them up behind him. Will we get the white flag here? White flag is going to wave before the yellow flag comes out, so it's going to stay right here at the front. Danny Ware going to spank her off the wall. Contact with your race leader. Swanson and Ware making contact. Here comes Swanson. Here comes LeMay. Now it's going to be Swanson at the line. And then it's going to be Jonathan LeMay, Danny Ware, Alan Young, Kyle Bingham rounding out the top five positions. Wow. And they're going to wad him up on the backstretch after this one. Yeah, your race leader, Matt Swanson, holding on to pick up tonight's feature event win. Jonathan LeMay finishes second. Him and Danny Ware were changing pleasantries down the front stretch to the checkered flag roger 0 0.008 seconds between danny ware and jonathan lemay that's the difference for second place I'm, I'm still speechless as the fireworks go off in my ear here it, it crazy racing here at the Southern National Motorsports Park here tonight for the Northeast Racers presented by the Elfod Motorsports Group. We will take a quick break, kind of calm down just a moment, and we will see if we can talk to your top three finishers here tonight from the Southern National Motorsports Park.
Welcome back here, race fans, to the Southern National Motorsports Park. We have your post-race show here tonight presented by the Elfod Motorsports Group. We have been able to already catch up with the driver of the 28, and it is the man of Danny Where Danny, it's not a win, so you're not going to repeat as a winner here from the Southern National Motorsports Park, but it is a strong third-place finish, and it was very chaotic out there tonight. Oh, yeah, it was just survival. I didn't think I had anything for them at all my car was junk the whole race and at the end it just started to come into it i messed up final lap it pushed a little bit coming off hit the wall but it's just hard racing yeah a lot of hard racing out there i mean you had a chance to win this one you said you didn't think you had the car but really it's all about being in the right place at the right time and you know all night that car looked pretty clean how did you wind up weaving through a lot of these wrecks I honestly have no clue. I was just kind of riding my race, giving everybody breaks as I could, just not pushing it too hard then. Just fell into the right spot. Well, either way, the right spot at the right time is the place to be here at the Southern National Motorsports Park. But how do you feel next week? You're going to take this super late model and you're going to head to the Five Flags Speedway. It is a very fast, tricky track. Are you ready to take on the Five Flags Speedway? Uh, hopefully. I wasn't ready to take on this track, but I did, but... Well, we'll see what happens next week. Well, that is next week. Before we kind of step away here, Danny, though, is I believe we don't have anybody else to really interview here after this one. We'll roll you the red carpet out, give you the bike. Who do you got to thank for parking this uh, awesome paint scheme 28 here on the podium? Uh, I'd like to thank Tony. Um, I'd like to thank Northeast Racers for hosting us, and uh, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, live streaming it for everybody. Well, there you heard it, Al, from your third-place finisher here tonight. It's going to go to the driver of the 28 week one winner of Danny Ware. Yeah, definitely a good finish. Not right where he wanted to. I thought Danny had a very good chance of picking up the win here tonight. Is uh, we take him, try to catch up with our second place finisher and our winner uh, tonight, Matt Swanson and that terminal trucking company number three. What a great finish! So, uh, great racing all around. Yeah, so Swanson will come home in P number one. LeMay does battle back for that second place spot. So it was a good run when you really kind of start to break things down for those drivers. You know, Swanson going to win it, though. That's going to put him back into the hunt for things towards the end of this. Uh, we'll call it. It was a six race uh, little tournament being put on here as we're only getting to call five of them as we had prior commitments. But. How about Five Flags Speedway next week, Al, in these cars? Five Flags is probably one of my favorite tracks on, on the circuit. Uh, it's very technical. You got to be kind of stay on top of what the track is doing, Roger. Uh, three and four is very tricky. The wall comes off of turn four very quick. I think it's going to be quite a challenge for these drivers. But as we've seen in these first three events that we've covered here on the Turn 3 Racing Network, they're up to put on a good show and up to the task for some very difficult racetracks. Yeah, that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm already excited after watching this race here from Southern National, you know, to head to the Five Flags Speedway. So that'll be next week right here on your Turn 3 Racing Network. Matt Swanson will win. Jonathan LeMay is second. And Danny Ware finishes in your third place. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we have any communication with either of your top two drivers. So we'll see if we can get a word in from them throughout this week and then see what they have to say about going to the Five Flags Speedway. But for everybody here at the Turn 3 Racing Network, we got to thank all the sponsors behind the scenes here. Northeast Racers, everything they do for all these guys. We also got to thank tonight's premier sponsor, the Elfod Motorsports Group. They are always backing all these drivers, and they got a big prize at the end of the season waiting for them. We got to thank all the dry, or all the tracks and teams and just anybody behind the scenes at the New Hampshire Short Track Racing Association from Lee Speedway, Hudson, Monadac, and Claremont. You know, if it wasn't for those tracks, you know, those short tracks up there in the Northeast of New Hampshire, you know, maybe we wouldn't know a lot of the names that we do out there. So once the uh, lifestyle gets back to normal and whatnot, race fans, why don't we head over to one of those four racetracks that we see a lot of the drivers here on the iRacing platform running at. But for all of us here at the Turn 3 Racing Network, everybody from the Northeast Racers, we will catch you next week here on Sunday night for the Five Flags Speedway. <laughs>